What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and today I'm coming at you with another free MMR Friday video. Um, this will be the first video of 2021 as today is also the first day of 2021. So this will be the first of many and I will also start my other shows. It just so happened to be Friday, uh, the first day of the year. So even though my last video also was a free MMR Friday one, that one was a little bit special because it was a much requested one. It was the, the taxi build. So today to change up the matchup and not do another ZVP one, I'm going to do one for ZVT and it will be a build that might help you guys win against Terran players early on. And it will especially help you guys on the small maps, which um, there are very often times there are small maps in the map pools. So in this map pool, it will be light shade and submarine. The very small ones on the old map pool, it would be Kairos uh, and Cyber Forest, for example. But usually there's always a, a short map here and there is Zen, for example, as well. Uh, very short. So yeah, if, if, if there's going to be a new map pool, you guys can just check the rush distances. Something that I learned recently is that apparently those are on Liquipedia, so you guys can check them there. But anyways, the build order will be a 5 Roach, or more, to be more precise, will be a 4, four Roach, 1 Ravager pressure uh, in the early game. And uh, I, I played, I, I asked Soul for a couple of custom games. I didn't not tell him um, in this game, this was the first one we played. I did not tell him what I'm going to do. I just told him to play normal. So that's what he did. So let's go straight into the build order of, of what you have to do in order to execute this build. So we start with a 16 pool. Um, before I go into the build, actually, the first overlord will get sent across to check where which path the reaper the which path the reaper is taking, and um, you don't need to scout for proxies because you're going pool first and you're going for a blind roach warren. So the first overlord goes straight across to check for the reaper. The second one just stands in front of your natural. But now the build order: you make do your spawning pool at 16, then you make two drones. The first one gets rallied to complete the 16 out of 16 saturation. The next one will be sent to the natural for a 17 hatch. So the 17th drone gets rallied down and you take the hatch at, at exactly 300 minerals. Then you make one more drone. So we have 16 pool, 17 hatch. Now we take the gas. So that's 17 gas. Now once again, we're going for one extra drone. And this 17th drone will be rallied to make the Roach Warren. Um, now, it doesn't really matter which gas you take, but it's very important that you try to make the Roach Warren as far away as possible to deny the SCV from scouting it. Uh, sometimes Terran players will YOLO in with the SCV, you're going to try to avoid it, I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. But important to note is the building positioning as far away from your ramp as possible. So on the other side it would be here, right? So now, once the pool is done, you stop joining at 17. Once the pool is done, you make two pairs of links. This drone that you rallied will make the Roach Warren. And you put three drones in uh, to the gas right away as it finishes. Then you make one extra drone. Then a queen. And then an overlord. And then you make five roaches. And that's pretty much the build order. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what these Zergans are doing. Usually if there's an SCV scout, you would, uh, well, first of all, see it with this overlord, but you will, would also see it with this one. So the moment you see an SCV come into vision range here, you try to dodge it with these two Zerglings to go around, so your opponent doesn't know which direction the Zerglings are headed, and doesn't know if there are any Zerglings on the map. And then these other two Zerglings, you put in a line and try to kite back deny the SCV from ever scouting the Roach Warren. This is very important. Uh, in this game, Soul actually did not go for a scout. As I said before, I did not tell him what uh, my plan was this game. So it, that was unnecessary. If there is no scout, you just go across the map with all four links and dodge the Reaper. As I said before, this Overlord checks for the Reaper path. Uh, I, saw, I saw the Reaper spawn on this side. Otherwise, I would have seen it here. So I will avoid them with the Zerglings. But for now, again, at 21, you make this uh, Overlord. At 19, you make the Queen. 21, Overlord. And now you're just not doing anything. You're just focusing on where the Reaper is going. The Reaper is going here. I wanted to be super safe. 
and go a little bit further around even it doesn't really matter the timing of of which you hit if it's a couple seconds earlier or later i could have theoretically waited here and then go here since the path natural path would be here and then what do we do with these zerglings if uh, the reaper left you just attack the scv that's building the command center if the marine is down here which actually happens to me very often if i'm playing against like the diamond players in the first run of uh, ept cups this is usually the build that i go for just just try to jump on the marine if you kill the marine it's basically game over but anyway so now he sees this and he starts returning with the reaper he can also try to get a scout off with the reaper and there's nothing you can really deny but just make sure that to micro your queen against it um and try to run around like if the, if the reaper doesn't turn around you can force a lot of lost SV mining time because he will need to pull SCVs. You will need to pull SCVs and you can run away from them. And the moment the SCVs return, you can try to jump on the Marine if the Reaper stays here. So usually the Reaper will go back. Now, as I said before, we're making five roaches. This will be two from the main base, then one from the natural, then one more from the main and one more from the natural. And at that point, we're at 31 supply and then we start the queen. So at 31, we start a queen after the five roaches. We just keep all three in gas, by the way, so everything pretty standard tried to get a marine here and I actually did end up getting one so that was huge the moment you have 75 gas the roach that is the furthest in front preferably without blocking the other roaches will be morphed into a ravager and we're just droning behind this so now you go and and, and check I know that his bunker is here so now the execution it changes a little bit uh, depending on what your opponent is doing. In this case, I knew he was building a bunker blindly here. He didn't scout the fact that I was going for Roach one. He was going for the scout now. But he went for the bunker. He also lost one Marine, so he lost a bunch of firepower. What I do against the bunker on this side is I start attacking this depot. So you can kill this depot for free. And then once the five Roaches are here, you just run by because this bunker is a little bit out of position, right? You also can take the reactor down with you since it's a pretty expensive building that takes a long time and now we just run by the entire goal of this is to kill as many scvs as possible i was supply blocked here by the way and i i w should take the third base now usually i would spend my money right now on drones and take the third base a little bit later which we're gonna see later on so yeah my opponent is just that here he already knows this is too much damage he's on two cc's not a third cc and i can drone up blindly behind or blindly behind this he won't have any Hellion pressure, so he can't do anything. Usually they go for a Cyclone, not a tank. Either way, uh, this is game over. So, once again, if the bunker is here, you kill the depot for free, and then you just run by. If the bunker is here, you can also do the same, kill the depot, and then run by for free. That's even worse for him, because that uh, bunker doesn't cover anything, besides maybe this spot a little bit better. Uh, you don't really care about the SCVs down here, it would waste too much time to attack them. You want to go for the jackpot, which is the all the SCVs in the main here. So yeah, that was that was the first game, let's uh, go into the second one. Alright, so now we're in the second game here. This again is against Sol, now he obviously knows already what I'm doing. And I told him to blindly make a bunker on the low ground, because this is the, um, one of the things... I also told him to SCV scout, because these are the two things that I still wanted to show, because this is where it changes the execution of the build. And it gets a little bit harder. Build order, again, 16 pool, 17 hatch, 17 gas. So it, it, it's kind of like you make a pool, then the two drones, the hatch, one drone, the gas, one drone. Um, the the roach horn. Two pairs of links, roach horn first, then one drone. So you always want to be at 17 drones, pretty much, before you, before you start doing something. And then... Um, the queen and then the overlord right so this this time around my opponent actually scouted i saw that already on the other side of the map but anyways i would see it now right i'm avoiding this preferably and the way i'm playing with these two links is so that both links can hit the scv at once and what you want to do is if he tries to get past you or mineral walk you attack it and the moment you attack command the scv you stutter step back immediately so you see I'm stutter stepping in the direction where the SCV is going. Because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want the SCV to be here and your Zerglings to be far behind them. So you just want to be on top of the SCV 
uh, once you're on creep, and the moment you're on creep, you can stutter step because the zerglings become much faster, right? And then you will always be able to kill the SV before he gets here. He didn't try to go for it because you will know that I, I would deny that. Um, so he just goes back. And now the Overlord again checks for where the Reaper is going. You don't want to go too close because then the Reaper can try to kill a Zergling and still come back in time and react. But basically what I do is I hide the Zerglings decently far away. So if the Reaper tries to go for one of them, I go in with the other two to try and snipe a Marine. Um, I didn't really show this last game the way the, these Roaches are built. Just to, to make sure that you guys get that one. So after the Queen and the Overlord. It's, it's pretty simple, you just ba basically make roaches with the first 5 larvae that you have. So the moment the roach one is done, we make 2 roaches in the main here. And the hatchery will finish immediately a roach here. We inject in the main base, roach here, and then one more roach here. And then we start the queen. And then we start an overlord. Also from the main base. And that's the build. Afterwards, it's, it's just normal Missouri gameplay. So we just make drones and overlords and eventually we take a third. I will show a, a follow-up if we don't kill the opponent in the next replay. So in this one, I scouted that there is a bunker here. What I like to do, if I don't lose the Zerglings, so if the if the Reaper, um, if if the Reaper does not go across the map, so I still have all four Zerglings, is I I like to just use them for tanking a couple of extra shots with the attack. Uh, in case the bunker would be here, I would hide them for a little bit and then go up with them at uh, the moment this supply depot goes down. So the one difference here, if the bunker is on the low ground, is that you wait to attack until you have everything here. Because it's all about the, the, the burst power of your units to force them to actually repair the bunker. This, uh, like you don't want your roaches to die one by one, so you also don't want to, them to run in one by one. Always focus fire, like always try to cross it by hitting the bunker plus denying SVs from repairing. And always focus fire the SVs the moment they get here. So you pulled a couple of extra SVs here, try to move away the Ravager if it gets focus fired. That's an advanced move. I actually didn't see that he was focus firing. The perfect play is to move it away with 1 HP and then just cross it by out of distance without attacking. That would have been optimal. But he still loses the bunker. Barely and starts losing the marines. And uh, that's also game over. So he calls game here as well. So we won't get to see a follow up again. To not take too much time of uh, soul. I ended up playing one game against the AI. To show you guys how you could do a potential follow up. Uh, I will also include all of these replays in the description below. So yeah. Let's head into the next one. Alright. So this is the, um, the replay against the AI. That I was talking about earlier. I uh, this will, this might be the one that you guys want to look at if you want to see how exactly you do the follow up. But to be honest, the follow up is not really part of the build order. This is just um, general game sense of how you follow up, because your opponent might go for a bench or something, which you you basically just need to react to, or I don't know some weird tell but and you might be forced to making extra units. I will go over um, the very standard response. If you don't just straight up kill your opponent like I did in the last couple of games. The build order obviously is the same, I think I went through it uh, often enough. Again, we morph the Ravager the moment we have the 75 gas at the front. Queen Earth, we go double creep tumor here with the Queen of the Natural. Under attack. I think if I, if I would want to go for 100% optimization, uh, this inject should be at the Natural, because then the drones would have less time. Um, like l l less distance to go. So in theory, this inject should be at the natural, but it's not that big a deal, and, and it kind of complicates things a little bit. Forces under attack. Either way, you want to use all your money to drone up, and eventually you will get 300 minerals pretty naturally, so you take the third hatch. I went back now, obviously this AI could not defeat, <laughs> could not hold this at all, but uh, so around, around when you just get generally get the 300 minerals, you take the hatchery. The, oh, actually one thing that's part of the build order which I forgot to mention is the, the first 100 gas after the one Ravager that you morphed, you invest into Zergling speed and you put two drones off gas. If you're about to kill your opponent, 
and you realize he won't ever have a cyclone out or anything that completely shuts you down, you can instead morph a low HP roach into a ravager. Uh, as roaches are morphing to ravagers, they will get a lot of armor, so marines can't really kill them. So you can change it up and not get speed and instead go for the ravager. Um, it, it, it's just a, a little of a little mix up that you can go for. So basically this, this hatchery will not finish before I get full saturation, so I got a second gas. And what I'm doing here, well I, I saw that he's obviously not going for a banshee. Very very often they cannot afford a banshee. The u usual way of holding this would be a cyclone and marines and a bunker like we saw from Seoul. Just with a little bit of a cleaner defense. Sometimes they can skip the reactor for extra marines and then they have more marines in the bunker and then it will end up holding. Uh, you will always get a bunch of SCVs with this. Um, but you also are required to do so because you invest a lot into this pressure, right? So I would say you need ar around maybe at 8 or so SCVs I would feel ahead quite a bit. I think you need around 5 or 6 plus a bunker uh, and then the game is already even. So that, that's that's around what you need. At least if they're playing a normal 2cc opening. And then usually there's a cyclone, this is why I'm going for the quick speed. One thing you need to look out for is when you have this, your opponent will realize that you won't have an early speed. So very often they will go across the map with a cyclone fishing for overlords. So your overlords should not be too far forward. They should be on cliffs or somewhere on the side. So that's one of the things. Um, and then the other thing is you need spores against banshees, if there are banshees. But the, the follow-up is, is pretty basic. I can, I can show you guys when I make the queen. Uh, the third queen. It's after the third hatchery, basically right before this inject. So the queen spawns under um, around a time when the inject expires. I don't go by supply. This is basically just winging it, but this is going to be pretty optimal. Like this all just feels natural to me when to add gases, when to add queens. But I will include this replay and you guys can copy this. So right before injecting, you always want to start a queen if you want this queen to do the next inject as well. So that's what I'm doing here. And as I said before, I'm going for a second guess. Now the follow-up that I'm going for here is will be a 1-1 one, one Roach timing. Evolution because I think this will be very easy for you guys to do. No matter if you're forced into a couple extra Roaches or not, you can always do that. Personally, I um, like going for double upgraded Zerglings and then play Ling Bane Ravager into Ultra. Which is also nice. You guys can also play Muros if you want. You guys can also play like the Dark Lurker style. So what I did here is I went for a pretty early lair, I went for double evo, and we're just gonna go for a, a roach ravager timing. You want if you do that, you want to go up to 66 drones. But this is not really part of the build order anymore. Uh, I just wanted to include this to see how you could potentially follow up. I actually played this also in a tournament earlier this year against Uthermal, who had a really good hold, but I still ended up winning that game also on submarine. Um, if you guys want to watch that, that was, I think, Dreamhack Summer, uh, game number four. And the uh, upper bracket, round of eight, playoffs, I don't know. I, th I think that's about it. I also played it once before, uh, this build order, against Big Gabe in the, in the Dreamhack Winter Group Stage 2 of 2019. Winner's match, third game on Cyber Forest. If I recall correctly. This was actually initially a build that I prepared for BlizzCon. And then I used to do this with six links, but it, it fits a little bit better with four links. Uh, which is what Solar actually did. Solar, without me even showing him the build, he also came up with this same exact build. I'm sure there might have been people before that, so... Um, I don't think this build should be claimed, claimed for anyone. Either way, I'm hitting the moment the upgrades are done. So like at at uh, around 7.30 my my 1-1 one one is done, 7.40. And I attack with around 170 supply, 66 drones for bases. As I said, you can pretty much follow this up with whatever you want. I just wanted to show you guys um, the builder and I hope you enjoyed it. Alright guys, now let's get to the part where I will talk about how free this free MMR will really be. Let's talk about the difficulty of the build. So the German taxi, as I said before, is going to be really hard because you need to learn the early game properly. It's not just a build order that you can follow. I know you guys 
in your ladder games won't hit this at the timings that uh, that I did in the replay. So I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, even though I, I think that honestly, it almost was a 5 out of 5. This one is very different. You guys just need to get the first three minutes down. And you guys are honestly going to get a lot of free wins. Um, I will give this, um, this build specifically a 2.5 out of 5. Straight in the middle. Uh, the, the reason is, even though this is a pretty easy build to learn, uh, while you're executing it, you still need to macro up. More often than not, I will assume that you won't just straight up win. So, and, and, and afterwards, you you kind of need to react still to what your opponent is doing. You can think logically of how much gas does my opponent have. Like, he has a Cyclone. Can he really also have, like, a like a, a Cloak Banshee right now? Or can, can there be a Battle Cruiser or something, you know? You guys still need to, to think of what is uh, possible and still react properly. But overall, I think the build and the execution itself is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. Anyways, if you guys have any build orders that you would like to be included in this series, just let me know in the comments. Also, subscribe and click the bell. This is stuff that I'm not used to, not used to saying yet, but <laughs> I hope this helps a little bit. And I hope you guys my numbers up. If you guys want to help me out, that's the easiest way of doing it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and see you guys in the next video.